Right, I'm off into the high files again and aim to leave no trace. Why not come with me? Well, good afternoon, and you find me near Grasmere. I've parked near um, just off the main road, at, what do they call it? Town End, which is slightly north of Grasmere. I have got my GPS on and provided the battery lasts out. I will um, put the map up towards the end. Um, but the idea today is to go up into the high fells and we're talking of um, what we're talking of. We're going up, um, up. I think is it Greenburn to off or towards Calf Crag, and then coming back and maybe ending up on Helm Crag. Now, if I just turn that way, I don't know whether you can see up there. That's Helm Crag behind me there, but we're going up this way to start off with. But what I want to talk about as we go, and I haven't really thought about it, what I exactly want to say, but there was um, an article in our local rag, the Keswick Reminder, talking about the effect of social media on the Lake District, both good and bad. And I thought I would, <laughs> as it were, put my 10 penneth worth in and say what I think one should and shouldn't be doing when walking on the fells so that you leave, you have no effect because you leave no trace. So that's the idea of the walk. The weather's very overcast again. Hence I'm out rather than <laughs> doing the outside painting that I've got to do. And, but hopefully we'll get some, some good images as well. Because there is marked on the map some waterfalls. So, we'll see. Whoa, this cattle grid's a bit slippy. So yeah, we'll carry on and we'll see you a little bit later. Right, well, we haven't come very far, we're, we're starting to get into the actual, off, off the tarmac tracks etc. And as we came through that gate there was a sign which you'll have seen on the b-roll saying stock grazing, keep the dogs on a lead. Now some people don't maybe realise that we seem to be out in the wilds. But in a lot of these areas, farmers do graze the sheep, even into the high fells, and quite often you can see them. So you should have your dog under total control. And if he can't, if he's not, or she, is not good enough to keep them under, that they're going to disregard you, you should have, certainly have them on a lead. And if you see sheep about, certainly have them on a lead. And it's... Lots of dogs see it as a bit of fun chasing sheep, but it's not for the farmer. It's not fun, particularly in the early spring, when a lot of the sheep are heavily pregnant. If you have a dog and... It just even scares the sheep, doesn't particularly go running after them, but runs a bit and scares them, they go running off. They could miscarry. Now, that is great expense to the farmers, so... Yeah, when you're out in the fells, be aware that, to a certain extent, it's a working environment. 
And if we look at that, if we look there, there's a wall. And these walls are probably, oh, maybe a hundred plus years old now. And it's my understanding, right, um, never researched this, but Irish navvies came along and built these walls. And these walls are used to separate the areas where a farmer might do one thing or another thing, or between one farmer's land and another farmer's land. So respect the walls as well. They're not something to be climbed on, because they are old, they are dry stone walls, which means there's no cement. It's literally just one stone carefully placed on top of another, giving building the wall and but over time they do become fragile so unless there's a style over or it's a dire emergency please don't climb on the walls we want this environment to stay for the benefit of others for for many years to come so be aware about livestock i'm not necessarily saying if it's obvious that there's no stock around you need to keep your dog on a tight lead but the slightest sign of any stock your dog particularly if your dog's not the, the most best behaved should be on a on a lead any sign of stock on a lead be that sheep or cows because some farmers do graze cattle in the fowls and do respect the gates, the walls. If the gates shut when you go through it, make sure you shut it again. If it's open, probably leave it open. And don't climb on the walls. They are important. They are part of the landscape and we want to keep that landscape. So I'll leave it there because we're coming. I can hear a a waterfall so we're going to have a mooch around see what I can find and maybe see you shortly right well we've come down to see the waterfall and it's our first composition as you can see there it comes under the bridge and then down into the river but if I zoom out you can see it's quite rocky and the ideal place for the composition possibly would be in the stream but these rocks are all extremely i mean you can if i look at the ones down here i don't know whether you can see all the lichen and the moss and that and they're extremely slippy so what i've done is i've come to a position where i'm just sat down and i've taken some handheld shots some hand, caught some handheld images of the waterfall. If they're any good, we'll put them up and then we're going to head further upstream where there are some more falls. So, yeah, I mean, hopefully it'll be a good image. As I say, the weather's not the best. The rocks are very slippy and I don't want to chance getting extremely wet. For a, an image that I think is never going to be the most epic of, of images. So, yeah, we'll put it up and we'll see you a little bit later. Right, well we've come up um, further on and we found another waterfall or cascades. Um, 
never quite sure what the difference is. And, uh, yeah, it's quite impressive that one and you can see we've got the camera there. And what I've aimed to do with this one is, uh, I'm at, I think I'm at full stretch on the 24 to 70, 70 mil. And what I'm probably going to do, because obviously the, the camera has de default um, size is 3 by 2 or, or 6 by 4 and probably what I'll do is I'll narrow it to 5 by 4 just bring it in because there's a bit at the side uh, that are unnecessary but I thought it was to do it in a portrait uh, mode wouldn't quite work either so that's what I've done um, as you can see the river comes down here and there are the other side of that wall some falls that you might have seen on the b-roll but I don't see any easy way of getting to them I, I did think about getting the drone out but it keeps raining and it's quite a bit windy and yeah I've got to get I've got to do something and get this drone out more often having bought it uh, I'm too much of a fair weather pilot I think and too fair weather rather than um, yeah I mean obviously you don't want to do it when it's chucking down where it's very windy but I think I'm a bit over reluctant so so yeah there's that and I think there's some more of this type of thing going on whether we'll stop and take any more I'm not quite sure if, if they're quite good we will um, but we'll carry on up up the slope to uh, Calf Crag yeah and um, the weather's not too bad as I say it keeps spitting but it hasn't it's never been so bad that I've needed to get me waterproofs out so yeah so carry on and we'll see you a little bit later The other thing I wanted to talk about in trying to leave no trace is paths. I'll basically try and keep to the paths and, and the centre of paths. So often we see, uh, and this is maybe an example, if I find other examples during the walk I'll put them on, where there's been a path, people have done that, it's been a bit wet, so rather than going across carefully, they go across at another point and slowly the path gets wider and wider and the vegetation gets destroyed. Now that really annoys me, particularly where, um, just carefully, there's a rock here, you see, and there's a rock there and we're across. So that's two rocks, we're across the path and I would have thought because we've been on the rocks, we've left no footprints. Whereas other people have gone chomping about and it's just made the path worse. I mean, I'm not saying that only stick to paths all the time, because sometimes you want to go somewhere and there isn't a path. And in that case, just tread carefully. In a lot of areas of the Lake District, there is what we call a right to roam. But you've got to be careful 
but if you're walking somewhere where there is a path try and keep to the path to stop the erosion getting wider and wider and the vegetation slowly disappearing and it just ending up looking like a wasteland so yeah that's paths as I say it really annoys me where the there's an organization called fix the fells and they come out and they put stone paths in they get, bring out rocks and create a path and then you find people don't like walking on the rocks so they walk on by the side of the rocks instead of walking on the path and destroy the vegetation and sometimes you got the rocks stuck up with two um, oh the word's gone two furrows either side where people have walked not walking on the path and they've just destroyed that we need to I'm all for people coming out and part of these the videos are to encourage people to come out into the fells to see the beauty to see the grandeur to see the majesty that God has created round about us so I'm not wanting to stop people coming out into the fells I'm just saying think beware make sure you've got proper footwear on a suitable footwear I think part of the problem sometimes is either people haven't got suitable footwear or they don't trust their footwear to be waterproof so they try and scout round bits of water and the path just gets wider and wider if you've got stout waterproof boots on like mine a bit of water's not going to cause any problems so you can go through the water you don't have to walk around and destroy all the vegetation so that's another thought on leaving no trace that stick to the paths if the path's going where you want to go if right where do I go here you see there's footprints there yet there's a definite path here so I'm going to follow the path so if you're going where there's a path stick to the path don't walk off just because it might be slightly comfier slightly easier you don't want to get your shoes muddy and then destroy all the vegetation either side of the path and the path becomes a huge large trackway of wilderness because well, people can't be bothered to stick to the path although it's a bit wet we'll go through it as I've said so yeah try and stick to the paths and if for whatever reason you're going off the path and you're using your right to roam go careful try not to leave particular evidence maybe a bit of evidence but that the grass is bent down but just go careful if you go into somewhere where you see if you see there's a a waterfall or or something that you want to get a picture of don't just tramp over everything think pick your path carefully where you're going to go so you, do, you leave the environment intact and you don't leave a trace that you've been there and you've stomped all over nature so I'll leave it there if I spot any other ones as we go along I'll video them maybe mention some at the time or have a video and put them in this bit here so yeah it's been a nice walk so far and you can see the way the weather's holding off it's not brilliant certainly damping so it's not suitable for painting but it's a great day and I want people to come out and I want the environment to flourish so anyway we'll carry on and we'll see you a little bit, bit later Right, we've come to the path 
between Helm Crag and Calf Crag and we're heading towards Calf Crag which is somewhere up there and I think I'm not going to bother because the weather's not brilliant there. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to see and I'm going to have to come back the same way. So I think what we're going to do, we're going to turn round and we're going to head back along the path, the bit we've just come on, but then head straight to Helm Crag, which I don't know whether you can see. It's, it's the one over there behind there's the grassy mound and then it's the one behind so we'll head there and hopefully we might get some images there i can't see the point in going on there so right we'll turn around and head that way and we'll see you shortly Right, well, we've made it to the top of Helm Crag and the summit is slightly back there. But what I've come down for is to photograph what is locally known as the lion and the lamb. I don't think I've really photographed it before and there it is. Um, I don't know how well you can see it. You can certainly see the lion and then just in front of it, just there, there's a little rock which is classed as the lamb. I think it's more obvious when you're down in Grasmere on the, the main road going past and you're looking up and you see it rather than being up here and so close to it. Um, it doesn't help that you've got the darkness of the um, of the fells behind so the lamb is less easy to actually see hopefully on the image I've taken yeah well what I did a couple of things um, you'll see the back of the camera there looking up to the to, to the line in the lamb and what I did was I set the F fully open at 2.8 to hopefully get that in fo focus on that and maybe anything else will be slightly blurred and there was a bit of light on it as well when I took the image just looking at the back of the the camera there you can you can it, it does stand out a little bit more so hopefully when we get home and we process it it'll, it'll look quite good so I don't know whether we're going to take any more images there is some sort of falls on the way back to the van we've got to go back slightly back the way we came back onto the summit and then down the other side and then there's a path going down um, I think it'd be quite steep in places getting down and I think there might be a waterfall there a little bit before we get to the van so so yeah 
we'll carry on doing that. Um, what I did, what I was going to say, I have taken one or two handheld shots, which, if I was going to put them up, you would have seen them. They were on the walk from um, the last composition to here. Um, partly looking out across that way, you can see there's a bit of light at the moment. Occasionally, there was a bit of light, and I've just uh, taken the camera out and got the image. Whether they're any good, I don't know, but hopefully, one or two of them, or at least one of them, will be, and we'll put that up. So, yeah, it's been a good day, and hopefully, I did not ramble on too long about um, the do's and don'ts when you're in the high fells. But, yeah, we'll put this image up, and we'll see you a little bit later. Right, well we're nearly back at the van now and hopefully we've got enough battery just to record this bit. So yeah, I think it's been a good day. Uh, coming down to what I thought was some falls, I think there are some falls that are on private land and there's no access. So I ended up going down what I thought was a right of way and then having to come all the way back up. So yeah, it's added to the journey. I mean, I'll put the map up and it shows, yeah, I've done about over six miles. so been quite a good day so yeah and hopefully you found the information about the do's and don'ts useful hopefully you're, you all follow them anyway and I'm, I'm preaching to the converted but I thought I'd do my little bit I'll talk about wild camping at some point when I go wild camping but um, today it was just about walking and what I didn't mention any rubbish please bring all your rubbish home and that so yeah that's brilliant and we've got some nice pictures had a good bit of workout so yeah i think it's been a good day um i'm not quite sure what's next next weekend this is monday and at the weekend we've got on saturday we've got the meeting in gateshead and i was debating whether to go over saturday somewhere find somewhere to stay or camp stop over and then go somewhere on the Sunday make a weekend of it I'm not quite sure so we'll see and just to remind everybody if you've if you're enjoying this video if you haven't already please click the thumbs up if you like what I'm doing why not subscribe it is great use to the channel we are growing but only slowly um, and please comment all comments are much appreciated I've had some brilliant ones that really really buoyed me up on from the last video so yeah and I do I do answer all comments or reply to all comments whether it be an answer or a thank you so yeah so God, I'm out getting out of, out of fitness a little bit of hill on the road and oh I'm worn out so yeah, we'll say, we'll leave it there and say, we'll see you on the next video.